Kevin. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Not too bad. Good. Thank you so much for being on Tell My Story. Gavin, you are a real icon in the South African fashion industry with many international awards and acclaims. Tell me how the journey into the fashion industry started for you. So I think that, you know, um, you know, growing up, I think for most kids, I mean, and now I deal with a lot of kind of uh, kids and young adults, I think, you know, part of the pressure is that you always have to know what it is that you want to do. And I don't really think that's actually true. And I think um, I'm an example of this. I mean, I, I started and had these great hopes of being a lawyer, went to UCT, I studied, um, and then I was very interested in forensics and um, I thought I could be super good at it as well. But I think part of growing up is um, finding your purpose, but also kind of pursuing something fearlessly and passionately. Um, I'd always kind of grown up with having um, a sense of entrepreneurship. I, um, you know, I was selling clothes while I was at Res at UCT and that's how my interest in kind of clothing grew. But actually my dad was in the clothing manufacturing business. So I started this entire kind of business running in Res or selling kind of reject kind of uh, menswear clothing you know whatever I could get my hands on from him and then eventually that grew when you know um, my supply of stock dwindled from him I ended up having um, to manufacture but the one thing I did know is that I was selling kind of things that I liked and I could sketch things or I had an idea of of just something that I like and, and that more and more I kind of deal with young creators now I realize that they do actually have to have some kind of inclination or idea or a talent that's innate as opposed to something being learned so I think in the beginning it was really 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 hard because I had no and I have no formal training in fashion you know so when you start everything you're making loads of mistakes but those mistakes are not in vain I believe I think they are mistakes which end up shaping the final product and you know my outlook on things that um, growing up in South Africa was very unique um, in terms of the fact that it was a very um, you know we're still in the days of apartheid and you can't as much as you want to discount the impact of what it is you can't actually you have to include it because um it you know it did have a kind of major impact i think in what i was doing how i was doing these things and also um access to things was uh was not necessarily easy so um and i think developing one's career and for the longest time right up until you know early 2000s and maybe even longer i don't think uh, designers of color also had an opportunity necessary for their work to be featured even in magazines i mean I, I, i'm a bit quieter now but a couple of years back i was kind of quite radical and very outspoken about these things i don't think it necessarily endears you to want to people but i do think long-term people appreciate you for that actually it's such an interesting um point that you bring up there because I had a conversation with a friend of mine uh, you know obviously with all the, the climate and the rest of the world with this mm. transformation coming to the forefront such an important issue and I think in South Africa particularly it's almost a little bit taboo so people are not speaking about it and without speaking about it that's, you know that's further um, I think people are scared of speaking about things because you know these conversations can very quickly get inflamed yeah. You can very quickly get misconstrued. And I think um, people are scared of offending the next person by bringing these things up because they don't necessarily know what to say. And they, you know, there's a, such an overt kind of emphasis on being superbly kind of politically correct. So that's also an issue, you know. So, but I, I think part of the, the thing is to have no fear and for people to be able to say things in a, in safe spaces and safe environments because then only can people share interact and 
and kind of have, form a different opinion in a very positive supportive space you know that gavin how is sustainability important to your brand and ethical sourcing of fabrics yeah so i mean those who know me know i'm being very uh, much a champion of the underdog i mean um I'm, I'm incredibly, um, you know, in terms of the business, the way we operate, it has to be a very fair business. It can't be exploitative in any format. I'm very anti any forms of exploiting labor, child labor, especially. Um, and the ethical sourcing of product is very important. You are encouraging a lot of women that are single breadwinners of households and particularly abused women and children? Maybe. You know, a couple of years ago, um, actually, yeah, it's actually one well, over 10 years now, I was uh, appointed a UNICEF ambassador. And part of what I was doing was, um, you know, and I was doing stuff beforehand. I, didn't, I really wasn't looking to be appointed to any position whatsoever. I was just going along doing my stuff. But I think um, I was kind of trying, I was taking a big, projects and one of the things that i noticed was that we have um, a huge issue in this country we have a huge issue in child abuse um, violence against children and and also against and, and violence against women and uh, these are not feel good um kind of causes just just one of the things I realized was that I was dealing with a lot of children who were victims of sexual abuse and their parents and mostly their mothers were in either very bad circumstances, living conditions, areas in which they were living, or they were very dependent on their partners and or boyfriends, husbands, whatever. And without some kind of empowerment economically, they weren't able to escape that situation. They weren't able to then provide, take their children out of that risk, remove them and maybe move to a, play, a different place. They weren't able to take their kids to clinics to get um, the proper treatment, all of these kind of things. So it was very important that I thought they should learn a skill. And I started this uh, movement called the White Light Movement. And it was really about bringing hope and you know, some kind of positivity into people's lives um, and spreading this kind of um, goodwill around. And I was very lucky. I started it in a time where I launched a homeware collection with a very big retailer at home. And a lot of the stuff that I manufactured for them, I used these women to do the work there. And it was, uh, uh, it was amazing because they did great work. Um, and then, you know, they were able to be, many of these women were empowered, many of these women went on to teach other women, so they shared the skill. And in a way, that's the kind of transformation you want. You want the transformation to be quite legitimate, credible, and it was, you know, yes, as a company, we were benefiting by, um, by, by, by having the product, you know, enhanced by these women, but they were being paid, and they were being paid fairly to do this and to earn extra money so that they can provide better for their children and for their families. I think the brand will always be couched in fashion, but it's more becoming lifestyle. I mean, I do many things, but, uh, and I think there's some exciting new additions to the product range that we're doing, but, um, I think definitely it will have a stronger presence, uh, digitally. Um, you know, for the longest time of the last years, I mean, I've only done one sale a year and <clears throat> the entire thing's been run online, but from a social media perspective. And we learned many lessons from that. We learned exactly how um, powerful our reach was on that, but also how many people follow us and how, you know, social media converts in, can convert into a sale. So there's a commercial translation into everything. So the, the only thing is that, I mean, and we're in a fortunate position was that I'd make stuff and it gets sold too quick before I could actually put it into anything. 
Um, and so with the lockdown, we've had a little bit of a time to catch up and to produce special stock that will also be available online so that it becomes an easy exercise if you want to kind of come online and shop on our site. Well, I can't wait to see what's in store for Gavin Roger. Thank you. And you're a real um, treasure. It was a privilege to chat to you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. God bless. Take care. And you too. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. You're welcome.